We spent 25 years restoring this house while well, renovating it because we don't have the money to restore, but renovating this house and bringing it back to whatever we could manage to do. And I was just appalled to think that somebody might come in and just doze the whole thing. That put me on the track to wanting to save these houses. And so I thought our entire neighborhood, irrespective of the year it was built or the size it is, it's in this neighborhood, and I wanted to designate the whole neighborhood. The city um, did their feasibility study, held multiple neighborhood meetings, community meetings. We all answered questionnaires, etc. So what we ended up with was really what we call heritage light. So our number one interest was not to lose the building, so no demolition, unless there was something unusual, but no demolition. That was the number one thing. The other things all kind of fall into place. So what we have in Armstrong's Point here is we have a rule now of what we all, most of us wanted, was from the curb, and driving through the neighborhood. We want it to look pretty much the way it did as originally as we could have. What you want to do inside your home, there are no questions asked. You can do, you can gut it. I could show you one of the most beautiful marriages of the shell of a home and it is as ultra-modern as you could ever imagine. It is spectacularly beautiful. Now, they have given that house another hundred years of life. I mean, it's, it's not a question of trying to keep everything old. That's not what it's about. Not at all. It's about trying to maintain this building and, um, and you still doing what you want to do. Okay. Um, Massive renovations have been going on on the inside. And, of course, the city has nothing to say about that. And what you do in the back of your house, outside the back of your house. The city has, is not saying anything about that. You can do anything you want in the back. It's primarily the, the front that they would like to keep the facade. One of the things you will discover by having the entire neighborhood designated is it includes the streetscape, it includes the trees, it includes every square inch of geography of the designated area. Uh, that's a real, that's a, that's a bonus. Uh, absolutely. The first thing that happens is your property value increases. Now that may be attached to maybe a little bit of heritage prestige or what have you, but for whatever reason your prices, the prices of your homes do not drop. They increase. Another thing that happens in your neighborhood is you discover that people start to, in the neighborhood, start to take a little bit of, I don't know, maybe it's just community pride. And if they've been putting off painting their house or, you know, putting up new eaves troughs or whatever, well, they, they start to. Not as a community, but individually. Uh, but many individually, so it becomes the whole community feels the same way. And so what you discover, is, and it's not immediate, but a little bit over time, that neighborhood actually starts to look better than it did in the beginning of the designation. So better care is taken of it, of all the buildings. We, we haven't had any negative, um, that's what I'm saying. We maybe haven't been designated long enough for enough challenges uh, that somebody might come and say, oh, I wanted to do this and now I'm not allowed to. That's not happened. And there's been extensive renovations going on uh, since that occurred, but everybody seems to have been able to um, do what they wanted to do. The home across the street from us here on Westgate over there, I don't know who purchased the home, uh, but it's been, it's been, it is being renovated extensively for almost 
almost a year, I think. Um, and nobody's heard any problems. You probably would not be able to paint the house bright purple because the heritage experts at the city would say, well, in that era, you know, as much as you'd like to have a bright purple Tudor home, um, I'm afraid we'll have to come to a compromise of something else. Uh, I, I'm just guessing. I'm trying to find something outlandish that almost anybody would say no to. But they're the, they're the people who put together what the community meetings came up with and what the experts can tie it together. So the city is the one who would, if you wanted to do something, it's the city you talk to. And the beauty of that, the beauty of that, now that might sound bureaucratic, however, there's a beauty attached to that. Number one, they hire experts. None of us are experts in heritage. It would be crazy for somebody like me uh, to tell the neighbor across the street what I think that Tudor house should look like. Now, at the city, it is people who, this is, this is what they do. And they go by the guidelines that the community already told them that they would like to go by. And they, so they put their expertise together with what the community wanted. And so the city makes the decision. So when we replaced our windows here, um, we, and that was after it was designated, and we were wondering, oh, shoot, <laughs> can we do this? Can we do that? You know, uh, it wasn't a problem. They said, if you're not changing the opening, you know, the original opening, you know, what you're putting, it wasn't a problem. This neighborhood and these houses belong to us for the time we're here. The neighborhood itself and how it's viewed by people who live in Winnipeg, it belongs to the city of Winnipeg. It's a neighborhood. 